Hello, everyone. Welcome this evening. My name is Shalaya Yazdi. I'm a public health practitioner, master's of science student, and a prospective osteopathic medical student. We have a lot going on right now during COVID times. It could be hard to balance po uh, positivity, productivity, and self-care. I'm passionate about contributing to creating a healthier community and coming together to get through such hard times. We are here to find ways to stay healthy during the pandemic and share wellness tools with each other. This week, we'll be discussing nutrition and how food can contribute to our wellness. Next week, we will incorporate mind, body, and spirit into our discussions. Throughout the third week of November, we'll be discussing chronic condition prevention, awareness, and management. Just before Thanksgiving, we will have a conversation about how to make the best of the 2020 holiday season during such difficult times. Our last session on November 30th will integrate all the concepts that we have learned throughout the month from all amazing guest speakers and panelists. I would like to introduce Dr. Tracy Stevenson, a family physician at Toro University. Dr. Stevenson is a certified culinary medicine specialist. I would also like to introduce Nader Shah, a master's of medical health science student who will be moderating our discussion tonight. Please feel free to type in any of your questions into the Q&A platform. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's zoom into wellness with Dr. Stevenson and Nader Shah. All right, so I am going to share my screen here. Let's see. Sorry, I'm gonna move this around a little bit. Does everyone see that? A thumbs up? Great. Thank you, Shalaya, and thank you, Dr. Um, Shoebrook, our diabetes expert around here and one of our leaders on the MOBEC, our mobile um, diabetes education unit that you might see around town. Um, and thank you all who tuned in today to watch as well. It, uh, Nader and I are very grateful to have an opportunity to be part of this. And so we're looking really forward to it. And as Shalaya pointed out, this is a month long um, Zoom into wellness. And if you missed last week's, we had um, Dr. Tammy Hendricks, our pediatrician and her Project Happy. And it was really awesome, a really um, great discussion about especially food for kids and children and probably the best color, um, uh, fried rice cauliflower that I've ever seen that her, her two kids made. But one of the questions one of the participants had was, well, what if kids like to eat healthy, but the adults are the ones who don't really want to eat healthy. And of course, they're buying the food and cooking it. So that's what we're going to talk about today, particularly around chronic diseases, because we don't get a chronic disease overnight, but it builds up over time. And it can even start way back when we're small children. So the the more we make these nice healthy choices, we're going to prevent some of those chronic illnesses. So we're going to talk about some food we can use as medicine to prevent those chronic um, illnesses and hopefully make better choices for ourselves and our kids. With that, I'm going to have Nadar. He's one of our incredible um, Toro students who's in the Masters of um, Medical Science program, looking to be a physician in the future as well. And he's gonna talk a little bit about chronic illnesses. And then we're gonna look at some of the things we can do to prevent them. So don't get disappointed when we hear all this bad news, there is good news. And then we'll do a quick cooking demonstration with some of those healthy foods. You want me to... Yeah, perfect. Thank you for that intro, Dr. Stevenson. So let's begin by with the problem of chronic disease. So first, let's define it. So now chronic disease is any medical condition that requires, you know, ongoing medical attention lasting longer than a year. And it will, you know, greatly limit your ADLs. In terms of prevalence, currently in the United States, about six in 10 adults have a chronic disease and four in 10 adults actually have two or more chronic diseases. Go ahead, go to the next slide, please. Now, in terms of the economy, this is quite important. So currently, the United States spends over $3.5 trillion a year on healthcare alone. And 90% of this cost actually is due to chronic mental and chronic health conditions, which is why it is very important to focus on reduction or prevention of chronic diseases through you know, appropriate lifestyle choices, such as you know, exercise, smoking cessation, and food choices, which is what we're going to be talking about mostly today. So now let's start with discussing, you know, the top chronic disease in the United States. 
So uh, coming up at number one, we have heart disease and stroke. And it's a whopping 868,000 deaths per year, right? And around $214 billion a year in healthcare costs alone. We also have cancer, which attributes to 600,000 deaths a year and 1.7 million new diagnoses per year. There's also diabetes. Diabetes is very dangerous as it could lead to other chronic diseases, such as heart disease or other complications, such as you know, kidney failure, as well as blindness. And currently there's 34 million diabetics um, in the United States today and 88 million pre-diabetics. And now carrying on with some top chronic diseases, we also have obesity, arthritis, and Alzheimer's disease. So for obesity, it's another very dangerous disease because it could lead to other chronic diseases that we have mentioned in the past, such as heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Currently 42% of adults are obese in the United States and 18% of our children are obese. Now arthritis, so arthritis is actually the leading cause of work disability and chronic pain. So currently one in four adults are suffering from arthritis. And now Alzheimer's disease. So currently 6 million adults are currently facing Alzheimer's disease. And now with the new increase in lifespan, it is projected by the year of 2040, um, the amount of money spent on Alzheimer's disease would be $500 billion of healthcare costs. And I'd also like to you know, touch on some harmful lifestyle choices and risk factors that are very important in conjunction with the diet. So there's also cigarette smoking, which is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. And we also have you know, a lack of physical activity. You know, this is very dangerous as it could lead to you know, further complications and increasing your risk of chronic disease, such as you know, heart disease and type two diabetes. And there's also excessive alcohol use, which contributes to 88,000 deaths per year. Okay, so I know some of those statistics sounded a little bit daunting and not what we wanna hear. I mean, this year alone between COVID and the unfortunate murder of George Floyd and then a uncertain election that seems to still be going on. The last thing we want is more uncertainty and thinking about those chronic diseases can really make us feel worried because I can guarantee you very unfortunately, but I'm sure there's someone in this room who probably has some of those risk factors because they're so common. So what we want to point out, however, is in these very uncertain times, there is a little bit of choice. There's a place where we do have some of our very own power, maybe not as much as that we always want, but it's a beginning. And again, over time, these tiny little shifts, you don't have to become a food expert or extraordinaire overnight, but making little tiny shifts over time have been shown to reduce almost every one of those chronic diseases, especially things like high blood pressure, diabetes, helping us lose weight. So Nada is gonna show us some of the actual research and some of the best diets that show how we can really start using food as our number one medicine. Right, so carrying on from what Dr. Stevenson said, today we're gonna to be mostly focusing on the Mediterranean diet. So as you can see, the Mediterranean diet is composed of these nine major food groups. And we have our vegetables, you know, your fruits and nuts, whole grains, mostly fish for protein, you know, plenty of oils and fats and dairy and meat and alcohol in moderation. Now, before I jump into, you know, how one would adhere to this diet, we're gonna talk about some of the benefits. Oops, my mouse is stuck there. Good, perfect. So the benefits of the Mediterranean diet, you know, major big picture is that you're greatly improving heart health and you're preventing chronic disease, but you can also, you know, reduce inflammation, reduce your BMI, as well as blood sugar, and you, know, you greatly reduce the risk of, you know, stroke, type two diabetes, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, and your know, overall mortality. And uh, here's one of the studies we'll be mentioning out of two. So this was one study done on uh, 22,000 Greeks, around 22,000 Greeks, adhering to the Mediterranean diet. And uh, results directly, show, directly showed that there is a reduction in the risk of heart disease and cancer by adhering to this diet. And also there's the, the lion diet or the lion diet heart study. And so 605 heart attack patients were studied and uh, they were asked to follow a Mediterranean diet and results have indicated that, you know, a 60 to 70% reduction in having a second heart attack. So, you know, there's a clear correlation between, you know, adhering to this Mediterranean diet, overall heart health. 
And now um, this is more for everyone to take home and utilize. So this is a adherence to the Mediterranean diet. So the Mediterranean diet is based on you know, a nine point scale. And now this scale is to nine points for, you know, adherence in ease of use. So for example, if you look at this chart here, you know, vegetables, two or more cups of vegetables a day, you know, that'll give you one point. You know, for whole grains, if you have, you know, two or more whole, whole grain servings a day, that's another point. And you want to shoot, you know, nine, a score of nine, if you add tally those up, you know, you're perfect, you're great. But, you know, you want to be from anywhere from a four to a nine, and you're, you'll be doing well. And it's important to realize that just, you know, a two point increase can lead to a drastic reduction in overall mortality. Great, thank you. So that's something to look forward to. And one thing I just like to tell patients is think about picking your MVPs, like the most valuable player of the world series. A lot of the things in the Mediterranean diet, they're full of our MVPs. M for minerals like magnesium, calcium, zinc, your vitamins, and what we call phytonutrients. It's the things in our food that have the color, the bright reds, yellows, greens, that bring all sorts of healing, uh, food, healing medicine through our food. And I would like to point out, although most of these studies were done on the Mediterranean diet, the data is kind of indicating, you don't, you don't have to live in Greece, you don't have to be a, you know, Italian expert, but it's the mix of having all sorts of different fruits and vegetables, as well as nuts, whole grains, and, and cutting out those processed foods like the white bread, white rice, pasta, anything that comes in a package, the fast food. When you shift those out, you could make your food Mediterranean, or you can use a lot of the same fruits and vegetables and have a southeastern flair, an Asian flair, a Latino flair, or Nader, what's your ethnicity? I'm Pakistani. Pakistani. So lots of really good spices and spices are also beneficial. So we could take the same sorts of uh, foods and whole grains and give them a Pakistani flair as well. So your job is you get to be creative making delicious things that actually are good for us. So a lot better than standing in line at the pharmacy paying for a drug that has a side effect, right? Now, I'm not saying that we don't need our medications because they help us, but what I am saying is you have a little more control in the foods you choose in potentially reducing those amount of medications you need and feeling better. And that's what we want. So we are going to take kind of a Mediterranean flair today and do a quick um, cooking demonstration. And what I wanted to make, as you can see the title here, spaghetti with garlic infused marinara sauce, mixed greens and crisp veggies drizzled with hand shaken Dijon vinaigrette. You know, I put that up there on purpose because it sounds like, a, you know, kind of fancy. And we're here just down the street from Napa Valley, wine country, across the marshes, Sonoma, some of the very best restaurants in the world. And I'll tell you, back when I uh, was a full-time vegetarian, we'd go to these fine restaurants and that's kind of what the menu would say. So it sounded really great. And then the salad would be like $20. And I realized wow, I can make fancy things like that at home without as much expense. So sometimes just even with your kids or your family, coming up with titles of what you're making it and sound, making it sound really fancy, you'll feel like you're at French Laundry or one of our fancy Napa restaurants. And there's actually some research that shows the way we think about food, how we smell it, those go into whether we like it or not. So we might as well give it fancy names. And so with that said, I also realized there's a lot of variance in why some people love to cook, some people hate to cook. It takes time, we work, we're busy. And especially again during COVID, but even under normal times, food is expensive and we have budgets and so forth. So we're today taking a recipe that overall really isn't that expensive. It's actually pretty quick to make. And I'm gonna show you a couple little of those little shifts we made. You wouldn't have to do this every single time, but just like if we, instead of going out to eat or eating a packaged food, we make something like our spaghetti and marinara with that nice side salad, those little shifts start adding up on your health. And so of course, spaghetti, I was at 
Food Max here in Vallejo the other day, and it was actually on sale. Two packs for 50, or two packs for a dollar. So 50 cents is a 12 ounce serving. They say, or 12 ounces, they say two ounces is a serving. So for 50 cents, that literally could be for six, for six people in your family. So that's not too bad of a price at all. But I wanted to show you though, if you wanna kind of bump it up a little bit, I don't have the stuff here. We probably ate it, but I think it's on the picture. Whole wheat, as you know, on the um, Mediterranean diet, those whole grains, meaning grains that are still like the brown wheat, the brown rice. Unfortunately, the food industry, when they make rice and a lot of our breads and wheat, they cut off the actual very healthy part of that. They kind of do that, it makes your bread softer and fluffier, but you're losing all of the nutrients. So when we add in those whole grains, we get more nutrients that actually come with the grains rather than it being added back in when they process it. You also can see here in the whole wheat, you'll get six grams of fiber rather than two grams. So just making that tiny little switch, you've increased your fiber. Fiber is very important for our overall health. It's been shown to help reduce our cholesterol levels. It certainly helps our digestive system. More fiber may help reduce how fast sugar gets into your blood, helping with diabetes. And you may even be hearing things like the gut microbiome nowadays, where there's these kind of good guys that live in our gut. And sometimes there's some bad guys too, but those good guys like to live off of fiber. And when we're feeding them fiber, Believe it or not, they're doing healthy things for us. They're making us good fatty acids. And there's some research that they may even help us not gain weight. So we want to feed those good guys and we want that fiber in our diet. If you really wanted to bump it up, or I know there's a lot of people who may be sensitive to wheat or have gluten sensitivity. There's different things out there. Like this one was made from chickpeas. I found that at Target, at Walmart, at Safeway, it's about $2.50 a box. So it's a little more expensive, but again, if you divided that by four, that's not a bad start. And you can see we get five grams of fiber and a huge amount of protein here. So we get 23 grams of um, protein with our chickpea. And here's a lentil one that has 15 grams of protein and six grams of fiber. So it's an easy way to make a small shift and add in those things that are gonna add to our health over time. And if you're thinking outside of the box and you really wanna try something, I invite people to try something like spaghetti squash. Cut out that grain all together and add in another nice vegetable. And so there's a picture of the squash there. I'm gonna to try to cut this open real quick. One of our, you know, we wanna be very careful with our knives. So in the kitchen, I usually hold them down when I'm moving. One thing that can help with the spaghetti squash, and sometimes they're hard, so we're going to see how good this works real time. Otherwise, maybe I have my husband help me, but is cut off the end. If we can make it flat, that wasn't really flat. There we go. Anytime we make things flat, it makes it a lot easier for cutting. So carrots, onions, whatever, cut off the ends. You can make it flat. And then if you put it flat, this is again where you have to be very, very careful, but then you just cut through there, make sure it's nice and flat on your uh, a cutting board that's not gonna slide around. And then you can cut right through that vertically. This guy was a tough nut to crack, but we'll get it. So again, we can have kids involved, but this is one where we want the adults to be dealing with the knives. But when you cut that open, you can see there's some seeds in there. I'm gonna take those seeds out. You can use a spoon or scoop them out. And the great thing here is these seeds. Remember that was on the Mediterranean diet too. Nuts and seeds are another great source of fiber, vitamins, minerals, things like squash and pumpkin seeds may have zinc as well as copper in them. You may be hearing in the, you know, wherever on Google or Facebook or wherever people taking zinc to try to prevent COVID. There is some research that zinc does support our immune system and helps against the common flu. So if we can get some natural zinc in our food, I think great. I would say you want to be careful if you're just taking a bunch of zinc supplements rather than eating it because 
when we have a lot of zinc, we also need copper. And so you, you don't wanna overdose on one without the other. The good thing about pumpkin seeds, they come naturally with copper in them as well. So one chore or something fun for the kids or for the adults is you do have to clean this off of the guts, so to speak. But if you get those seeds out of there, you can rinse them in water, uh, put some nice spices, some flavoring over that, and you can roast them right in the oven while you're making your squash. And there you have some seeds. So that was like a bonus, right? The, this squash was about, I think, $1.69 a pound, and it came with free seeds. Those seeds, by the way, make a great snack. Having a handful of seeds with all those health benefits versus like a handful of potato chips or something is one of those great shifts that's going to help you be healthier and healthier. And so you can use a spaghetti, or it is a spaghetti squash. Usually I might drizzle that with a little bit of olive oil, put some spices on there, flip it upside down on a baking sheet, put it in the oven for about 40 minutes or so. And we'll send you a link with the recipes um, if you want those and more information at the end. But that's one thing you can do with a spaghetti squash. If you don't want to work in your oven, you can also put that right in the microwave and microwave it. So it's another way to really get creative with your spaghetti and get those extra points. Remember, as Nader said, the um, research shows increasing your point level by two points can reduce your chances of any type of death, including heart disease and cancer by 25%. And that's just from eating more vegetables in our diet. So that is really good medicine, right? One last thing, because I love this one, I wanted to show you, if you don't want squash, kids like this one as well, try once in a while, maybe making zoo noodles. Let's see if I have my contraption here. And so you just take a zucchini, a tip here is when you're at the store, look for the ones that are nice and round. I mean, I have a yellow squash here, but you can see it's kind of got that curve in there. So it's a little harder to get into my machine, but you can trim that end off and we'll spiral that. But we'll put this one in. I'm going to just shorten it so I have a little more room to work with. This is another thing kids love, but these blades are super sharp. So make sure you load the blades for them and be careful when you're washing them. But you just put your zucchini in there and then spiral away, right? And so now we've just made our own pasta, zoo noodle pasta, which is fun and a great source of fiber and things like beta carotene, which also protects our immune system, helps our vision. You know, you hear about people with macular degeneration and they take those tablets with xanthan and lutein in them. That's what we get when we eat orange foods, green foods, zucchini. So we can get those things without taking it in a tablet. It, ta it tastes way better. And maybe we'll prevent some of the things like vision changes as we get older. So whatever kind of zucchinis you like. I love talking about the farmer's market. We have one here in Vallejo on Saturdays. Go support your local farmers. If you don't have your own zucchini, you can buy those. They're not too expensive and you can find them at the grocery store. And so now we can have noodles. We can up it a little with some whole wheat noodles or we can actually try a spaghetti squash or a zucchini. And so um, I already baked my squash earlier, truthfully, but that's kind of where we're going with the squash there different things. I just put that picture in there showing you the different ways you can get it. And you can even grow this stuff. I try to grow everything this summer. The only thing that grew was zucchini, but trust me, we had a lot of zucchini noodles. All right. So another thing I like to do, again, we're thinking about time and saving time. I really actually love to make my own tomato sauce. And Trust me, I was never a big cook. I'm fortunate to be married to my husband who's kind of a novice chef. So he's gotten me into this, but I'm surprised that the more I just get in the kitchen and mess around and practice, the more I find out, wow, it's not hard to make tomato sauce at all. So you can always make your own homemade tomato sauce, but I know people are in, um, hurries and we don't have a lot of time. And so we can also buy it in a jar. One thing I do like to do that adds in a few more of those points, some garlic and some onions, is to chop some up, dice it up beforehand, 
I think we're running a little bit low on time. So I'm not gonna show you how to cut those. We might be able to put it on a video later or something, but dice up some onions and garlic, throw them in a little pan. I usually drizzle in a little bit of oil, something like grapeseed oil has a hot heat point. So it's hard to burn it. One kind of rule of thumb, those healthy oils, like the extra virgin olive oil, the healthy they are, the less we want to cook them. You never want, I mean, ideally we don't want to deep fry anything because when that oil gets hot, that's what kind of turns it into quote, one of the bad fats, but drizzling olive oil, making your salad dressings out of it. And some people do saute with it on a low level. Another thing I do sometimes if I don't, you know, have a lot of time to cut up my garlic and cut up my onions and all of that is I'll make some flavored oils. And I've almost used this up. You know, Toro has been having a um, food pantry at the end of the month. So keep your eye open for the end of November. But last month, the, the um, food bank has worked with some of the um, staff at Toro and the students. And so we, you can, it's a drive-through food bank we all have our masks on, you can pop your trunk and we put some food in there. And so last week I came home with a bag of onions and apples and potatoes, all sorts of great things. And one thing you can do is take some of your oil, heat it very, very gently, but chop up a bunch of those onions, let it seep in there. And then you have onion flavored oil. You could do it with garlic. I've been doing it with everything lately. Turmeric is my newest favorite, which I learned from Dr. Hyman's book, but turmeric is a great way to get antioxidants. And then you don't have to cut this stuff up. You can just pour your flavored oil in there, get that onion flavor and those onion and garlic both. They're very good power foods. They are vegetables really. And um, garlic contains something called quercetin. It's a well-known anti-inflammatory. It probably helps lower our blood pressure both garlic and onions contain sulfur groups in them. That helps our liver detoxify things and they contain a lot of antioxidants. And another trick is if you saute up a little bit of garlic and onions in your pan, it doesn't matter how bad of a chef you are, people will think your food tastes good. So you have that fancy name on your dish and then you got some good aromas going on in your house. The research shows it automatically thinks people are going to like that better. So that's a little trick if you have some extra time. Otherwise, you can just go with your regular old um, tomato sauce. Shouldn't say old, but there's different kinds. So just like looking on those boxes and saying, oh, I can get a little bit of fiber by moving up with the whole wheat. On pasta sauces, full of tomatoes. Tomatoes are fantastic. They're full of lycopenes, which is one of those phytonutrients that help us fight inflammation and help keep us healthy, especially when they're cooked. So if you look at the jars though, and this is another thing you can do with kids or you can do it yourself in the store, is become a slew. You know, it's like, where's the sugar is what I'm always on. And it feels like a big task, but the more you get used to it, it doesn't take that long. One thing the food industry does is they put sugar in everything and it's terrible. Some of the best researchers in the North Bay are right at Toro and doing a lot of research on what that sugar does to our um, diet and how it adds to diabetes. So we know we don't want all that extra sugar, also sometimes called high fructose corn syrup, in things, especially why should they hide it in our pasta sauce? our ketchup, our condiments, our salad dressings. So you wanna look closely and see what you, what might be lurking in there and you can make a better choice. This again was at Food Max last week and they were on sale for 88 cents. So that really was a good price. Again, if we're thinking about the cost, we can feed four to six people and we have 88 cents in our sauce when it was on sale and 50 cents on, on our pasta. It does have 12, um, grams of carbohydrates and three of those grams were added sugar. So why they added that in there, I don't know. So you wanna look at that, especially if you're working so hard, you're diabetic, you're trying to get your sugar down, you're not adding anything in extra, you're drinking diet drinks, and then you're being tricked into eating it through some of these things. So we just wanna keep an eye out on that. But otherwise it did have some fiber now, Prego was a little bit more, $1.88, but that's a pretty good price too for a whole jar. 
And they also had four grams of sugar, but I put a little star there because they actually, and I, I thought I bought one today, I don't know where it is, but um, oh, it's over here, ready to go. They actually have one that's no sugar added. I kind of got two cameras here, so I don't know, hopefully you guys are switching back and forth. So it's actually the same price for no sugar or sugar. So the good news is let's have no sugar. And so we can just drop that in there. I'm gonna put it in my pan with my nice garlic and my nice onions. We'll let that kind of heat up for a second. And then boom, we've got our pasta. We've got our sauce just like that. And so let's see. I'm playing around. This of course already was in the oven and because I cooked this earlier and it's been sitting in my oven, it got a little more done than it normally would be. But that's our spaghetti. I put a little bit of um, spices in there beforehand, but then you can just take a fork and you, and you scrape it and it will scrape off these nice little strings like this that becomes our spaghetti, right? So you could actually just put your sauce right on your spaghetti if you wanted, or if you got a bunch of people, just scoop it out. But there you go. Just like that, we have a whole bunch of vegetables, a nice tomato sauce. It looks nice and fancy. And then we're gonna just put a salad on the side. And so one thing I like to do with salads, you know, if you can get your own vegetables, again, I love the farmer's market. Also Sustainable Solano, they have a lovely website and they have some uh, webinars as well. They used to do it in person until COVID where they have actual, the chefs, and the local farmers here in Solano County, and they highlight their foods and the things that are in season. So um, some of the farms in Dixon, uh, Chef Wyatt at the Barn and Pantry gave a nice talk the other day, and you can get the vegetables again from the farmer's market or whatever works. If you're at the grocery store, we can get those. One of my favorites are the ones that come in the pack. Now, these are all organic. When possible, I do like organic, especially for those foods that are, quote, on the dirty dozen, things like spinach, because of the pesticides. But trust me, eating any vegetables, if you haven't been eating vegetables of any sort, are still so beneficial that as long as we wash them, they're going to be great for you. If you can get organic, that's, that's great too. These are like $4.99 at um, Food Max. I think you can get them for $3.99 at Costco if you have a membership there. Um, but any nice dark greens, those are what we want in our salads. And again, you could buy them and chop them up yourself. Things like kale, you'll save money that way. And what I like to tell patients, kids and adults is add some rainbows to your greens. So when we're talking about these different MVPs, the minerals and the vitamins and those phytonutrients, where the phytonutrients come from and are concentrated are in the colors that make like our tomatoes red, our peppers red, our squash a little bit yellow, our greens greens, and all of those phytonutrients all contain different healing foods. And when we put those together, that's when we get the most health benefit. So we don't want to just eat tomatoes every single day, but the more we can add in color. So I always like to ask the kids, did you eat a rainbow today? Did you have something red? Did you have something orange? Did you have something yellow? And sometimes they're at the grocery store and saying, oh, we better get some blueberries because I didn't have blue today. So it's another way to have a little bit of fun with food. And you don't have to be thinking about oh my gosh, do I need this many grams of carbs and this many of vitamin C? Just think about eating your rainbow. If you're getting those colors and they're in vegetables, not Skittles, then you're going to be getting lots of those good um, nutrients that we need. And so again, the greens we have there, avocado, I discovered my husband ate our last avocado, but you know, those are good problems to have. If you don't have all those cookies and junk in your house, then what are you gonna end up snacking on? Your things like your avocados and nuts. And I feel like the more of those we eat in general, unless you really, really need to control your calories, 
go for it. Eat all the um, carrots, all the um, cucumbers, all the different things you want. So whatever you have in your fridge, I had a cucumber here, I'm gonna put that on, some carrots, and I'll show you another little trick I like to do. You certainly don't have to do it, but sometimes it's another fun thing is, oh, I don't know where my little peeler is. Here. And the rest of my cucumber. Now cucumbers, if I get them organic, I'll keep the green on them. If they're not organic, I usually peel them just because that's where a lot of, things concentrate in the skin. But also sometimes I like to peel them a little bit. If you give one of these um, peelers, it has a little serrated edge on it. My friend Ganya bought me this one and she helped me discover. At Sonoma and Williams or one of those fancy kitchen stores, they might be like 10 bucks. But if you look at some of the Asian markets, they're, in, they're, they're there. So, or another thing, you know, like the zoo noodle thing. I know that's maybe $15 or so to buy if we're on a budget. One thing I do is I go to a lot of thrift stores and I'll look in the, in the, in the dishes section. People get these and they get rid of them. You might be able to pick one up for a buck or two. But if you have a serrated uh, thing like this, it puts a nice little groove in there. And then when you slice those up, it just gives it a little texture, kind of gives it like a little bit of a um, flower appearance. I did that with some of those carrots beforehand too. So it can just make it a little bit fancier. Sometimes kids like that. And again, visually people think, wow, that's nice. We had some red pepper. So I got some red in there and you know, cutting a pepper, usually you can kind of just slice it towards the edge. So you're gonna make a square. And if you guesstimate just right, then you avoid those seeds altogether. And I'll tell you what, my mom sent me this link from YouTube about planting these and I planted it and I'm actually growing peppers now. It flowered and everything. So you can take your seeds and try to grow your own peppers and then you'd save even more money. So we cut those in little strips. We call those julienne strips. Put that on our salad. I already chopped up some little cherry tomatoes. And I do have to give a shout out. I, you know, there's probably, Safeway is a great store to find some organic things. Um, but Food Max here in Vallejo have been adding more and more organic things. So I just want people to know, even though sometimes it seems like there's not all that out here, they've been adding those in there. So you can get some nice tomatoes. And another thing you can see, these are cut into quarters. So they're the little cherry tomato. If you have the time, you could just put it on their hole. Again, it depends on the time, but if you wanna practice your cutting skills, you can cut that into a quarter. That makes four little pieces. So that was just one cherry tomato. And so you can make, even though the, the box was $2.49, so it seemed kind of like a lot, those are gonna go a long way. And next time you're at a fancy restaurant and you look at your $12 salad, notice how many uh, tomatoes are on there. Not that many. So. Again, we get better deals at home. When, when we were making the sauce, I forgot to say, if you have something like mushrooms, slice some, them, some up, you can put that in your sauce as well. And then I usually save some for my salad. You know, the more I can get on that salad, the better we can be. And also, when, when you're making your sauce, and maybe one reason they sometimes put the sugar in, in the sauces is tomatoes can be kind of tangy or tart. So the sugar helps sweeten it up, but we don't want all that extra sugar. So sometimes taking a carrot and dicing it really nice and small and throwing that in with your pasta sauce, carrots are naturally sweet. So they might add that sweetness without adding in the sugar. And guess what? Now you ate something orange today and got another vegetable in your diet. So those are some tips you can use. And again, those greens, those are full of our MVPs. The more we can eat these, the better. You're gonna get fiber, you're gonna get the carotenoids. And I put this out there because there's some evidence that it even helps produce nitric oxide. The benefit of that is it helps open up our blood vessels to prevent high blood pressure. But it's also the same sort of thing that the drug Viagra is doing. So men, the more you eat your vegetables, the healthier you're gonna be. 
And we all wanna do that for our um, blood pressure as well. Breathing deep helps our nitrous oxide as well. So I think in a couple of weeks, Paisley or someone may be doing some stress reduction and some breathing. And this is just like free medicine we're getting, right? Those avocados, again, Steve already ate mine, but we love avocados. They're full of what we call the muffas or the monounsaturated fatty acids. That's another one of those good fats. Those are the things that are gonna help keep our cells nice and healthy. Lots of fiber, potassium, magnesium, protein. The avocado is a really nice thing to add on to our salad or eat them as snacks. And in one of the pictures back there, I think there was a salad that was full of beans. Those are those legumes. Remember the legumes we saw help improve our life as well. And so beans, legumes, sprinkle a little bit on top of your salad. They actually make them taste a little more quote meatier and it adds in that protein because you might have noticed we didn't put any meat in our pasta sauce we're going to get a little bit of protein from the type of pasta we chose or we could add on the legumes and from our avocado again it's just ways to make these tiny little shifts that sneaking in extra healthy food for you and so finally, I know we're probably running out of time, I could probably talk forever, but the salad dressing. I had a bottle of the nasty one, but that's okay, we probably don't wanna see it. I was gonna, oh, here it is. Now we can buy these and it seems like a deal because it's cheaper. And this was interesting to me because it says, no high fructose corn syrup. So they're trying to trick you into thinking this is better. And we don't want high fructose corn syrup but we have to be careful because sugar, whether it's white sugar, beet sugar, molasses, honey even, and or high fructose corn syrup, those are those sugars. We, we don't need it in our salad dressing. We don't want it being just hidden on us. And this dressing doesn't really have the extra virgin olive oil. That's that healthy fat. This is more of a canola oil, soybean oil. Those are not the kind of good fats we want. So I love to make salad dressing at home. And I already mixed this up, but the general rule of thumb for a vinaigrette is three parts oil. And again, this is where we would like the extra virgin olive oil. So this is gonna be the one place where it is a little bit expensive, but it's not like we're drinking the whole bottle at once when we make our salad dressing. So it will last a few uh, times. And I think of it as an investment in our health long-term because we know how healthy this oil is for us. The more it's extra virgin, it's the less it's been processed. So it has much more of those phytonutrients, things called polyphenols, something called hydroxytyrosol. Sounds like we're in biochemistry class, right? But that's been shown to help lower the bad cholesterol, maybe make your blood less sticky so it doesn't clot. So if we can, we want to try to get that extra virgin olive oil. And again, for us here in the North Bay, we're lucky because there's olive trees all over. And so we can help out our locals. And I'm trying to remember the Sky Ranch, what is the, the, the Sky Ranch estate in Fairfield. They very unfortunately had their entire grapes, I believe, burned down in the last fires we had, but they did save their olive trees. So that's a great uh, store if you want to support or any of those in the North Bay. But three parts oil and then a part acid. So we usually use a vinegar, all sorts of vinegar. I like red wine. You could have champagne, make it really fancy, good old apple cider vinegar, even lemon juice, something that's acid or sour. You're going to mix that with your oil. Then I usually add like a, a tablespoon of mustard. The mustard helps act as what we call an emulsifier because normally oil and vinegar wouldn't mix, right? But when we put that mustard in there and we really shake it, then it's going to mix into a salad dressing. And there is a couple teaspoons of honey. You can decide if you want to add them or not, but kind of in the culinary world, we do wanna uh, balance out that sour with a little bit of sweet. But one to two teaspoons of honey that you're doing at home versus that processed thing in the bottle, that's not going to be a bad deal as long as we're eating healthy most of the time. And you can see um, spices, any kind of spices you can get your hands on, chop them up, 
put them in your pasta, put them in your salad dressing. I usually keep a little bit of the, when I'm chopping up my garlic and my onion, or if you have shallots for the salad dressing, those all add flavor there. Um, there's a lot of research, especially again in that Mediterranean diet and something called the blue zones, where in different areas throughout the world where people are eating healthy, one of the things is a lot of these plant-based foods with the good fat, getting exercise, having a sense of community, and they eat a lot of spices. So the more we can spice things up, the better it's gonna taste. And we're gonna get a lot of those good medical properties in those spices. So you can grow those in your yard. I just got those out of my yard today, chop some up, put it in my salad dressing. And there you go. Let's see, what did I do with my salad? Put it on my plate really quick. You know, I'm at home, but you could use tongs or <laughs> make it look a little bit better. And now you got this nice salad, all those colors, you're gonna drizzle it with your nice homemade salad dressing. And I forgot my last thing, let's get nutty and top it off. So we talked about making the nuts from our squash seed as a snack. Another thing I love to use are uh, pumpkin seeds that have already been shelled, pepitas. They again have the zinc, they have the fiber. You can roast them in your toaster oven. You don't have to roast them, but they really, make people think, wow, this is good when you roast those up a little bit. And so you can just sprinkle some uh, pepitas on top of your salad, or if you happen to have walnuts, walnuts are very heart healthy. They have some of those omega-3s, they're full of antioxidants. They actually have melatonin. We think about melatonin helping us sleep, but melatonin is also known to be a good anti-inflammatory. They have what are called sterols that help our body not absorb the cholesterol from our food. So throw in a few walnuts if you want. And if you have almonds, they're another source of those muffas, vitamin E, something called glutathione, which is a very um, strong antioxidant in our um, body, good for our brain. So it not only makes our salad taste really good and seem extra fancy, we're actually kind of getting medicine benefits from it. So if you didn't have me talking all the time, you can actually make that pasta, make that um, salad, put that nice dressing on it in a pretty short amount of time. It's going to be delicious and it really isn't that expensive and you're moving much more towards that healthy diet that over the long term is going to help prevent those um, chronic diseases that we talked about. So thank you all for listening. I put, I had my stethoscope because I was thinking, I think we can do more for our patients with food than maybe we do with our uh, stethoscope, but we use our equipment Perfect. together and get the best of both worlds. Perfect, thank you, Dr. Stevenson. We also have a few questions we'd like to run by. So first, this is in reference to uh, chronic diseases. And the question goes from our attendee, you know, as a doctor, uh, what do you recommend we say to people who are convinced that they do not know anyone who have these diseases and therefore don't care? Um, well, you know, I think you are, it's always best to talk to your patient or the person and kind of get a feel for why they might think that and then say, you know, even though you might not know anyone as we get older, we do see that the evidence is there, the research is there um, that it's a risk for that. And sometimes I try to think about, again, it depends on the person and what, what they're willing to think about, but is even thinking about, forget about it for health, just eat because it's more enjoyable or try something outside of the box and see if you like that. And the good side effect is you're getting some healthy food. Because I do think sometimes when we use the words nutrition or we say this is healthy, that can be a bad word for some people. They automatically think that means I'm not going to like it. So is sometimes trying different things, sometimes um, making something yourself and, and having the person try it. And then they're like, oh, my God, that had grains in it, whole grains. And, and they might be surprised. OK, perfect. And next question, it's uh, in direct relation to cooking. It says, how long can you keep the onions or garlic in the olive oil? And they noted that I know sometimes it can be hazardous if left too long or unrefrigerated. 
That's a good question. Um, some of the research and the recipe I followed say to play it on the safe side, probably mo no more than seven to 10 days. And again, you just want to make sure because you don't, uh, especially with onions, you don't want any uh, bacteria or things growing there. So that's why I usually make a jar. We go through it like crazy, but um, I'll make a jar and then I keep it in the fridge, but try to have it used up in about seven days. Okay. Nice. And uh, another question was um, about roasting pumpkin seeds and how one would go about doing that. Yes. So you can take pumpkin seeds, a couple of different things. If you really, again, I don't like heating those oils, but sometimes because they just make them look so nice is I'll take some pumpkin seeds, a cup or so, put a couple tablespoons, maybe even on my flavored oil in there, just so they're coated. And then you can put them in, I can open my oven here. Not a very pretty tray here, but in my um, toaster oven, just spread them out so they're nice and thin. You want a thin layer and you can put them in your toaster oven about 375 and it's about 10 minutes. Now, one thing I would say, that I've learned through trial and error and I still do it. In fact, I'm gonna show you because I want people to know you don't have to be some sort of expert in the kitchen and you can make a lot of mistakes like I do all the time. I was roasting some almonds today. I, I don't know if you can tell, but um, I thought they were doing fine. And next thing I know, these they were burnt. And nothing makes you feel worse than your nuts that are a little bit expensive sometimes burning up. So you have to kind of get a feel for how hot your oven is. But generally, it's about eight to 10 minutes. With pumpkin seeds, you'll actually hear them starting to pop. So if I hear them popping, I know they're getting ready. And the other thing, especially with walnuts and almonds, as soon as they start to brown just a little bit, I usually take them out because they'll continue to cook and they go from nice toasty brown to burnt just like that. Okay, nice. And we also have another question directly to you. And it says that you mentioned you used to be a vegetarian. Did you switch to Medita Mediterranean? And uh, what were some of the reasons for your switch? I know people always ask that. <laughs> My husband's standing behind me. I, I married a, a paleo hunter gatherer. Um, truthfully, uh, I, I agree with the vegetarian diet for a lot of reasons. We know that uh, plant-based diets are very, very healthy. And in the United States, we know we probably eat way too much meat with the saturated fats. Also for humane issues, uh, our farming industry in the United States, especially, unless again, we can get it from our local farmers who are um, letting their cows eat grass and not feeding them this corn from the uh, GMO corn industry, um, then they're gonna be healthier animals. Those were some of the reasons I was a vegetarian. Um, I did get married and my, my husband really is probably a true paleo person. He, he will hunt his own food, he saves, every piece of it. He doesn't waste it. He doesn't trophy hunt. And we give thanks to that animal. So he, I would start eating a little bit of meat here and there or fish. And the other thing I would say, even though I do believe you can be a very healthy vegetarian, you have to be careful. You can't kind of get lazy. When I was in medical school, vegetarian, and I grew up in Michigan and was in school in Chicago, you go to a restaurant, there, there weren't any vegetarian choices short of french fries or pasta. So there was a period of time when I got lazy with cooking, I just ate a lot of those kind of carbs. They weren't meat, but they were junk carbs. And that did not do well with my body. One of the things with vegetarianism as well, you do need to get things like vitamin B12, which is hard to do unless you really work on it. So some of those diets, you can do them, but you just want to make sure you're getting all those vitamins and minerals. But I definitely think just smaller amounts of meat. I certainly don't eat huge amounts of it, just like um, uh, on the Mediterranean diet, lower amounts of meat, mostly vegetables and those good grains. Okay, nice. And also we have a question on culinary medicine and functional medicine. So the question is, uh, how does one attain special training in culinary and functional medicine? And how are you applying this into your practice? Well, 
Thanks. Well, um, the, there's different culinary medicine programs out there. The one I went through um, is called Health Meets Food. I think you could t Google in Health Meets Food or culinarymedicine.org. And um, they have different programs. I did it after I was out of medical school. Um, now they have multiple programs that are part of teaching kitchens in medical schools across the country. And I'm very, very excited and proud to say um, Dr. Grace Jones, who I think is gonna be speaking next week, she um, has been working and we got that Health Meets Food program into our curriculum at Toro. So we're slowly rolling that out um, with our students. And part of that curriculum also includes community input. So my big goal, I'm going to shamelessly advertise this right now, but I believe in our office, if we could do group visits where our, with our patients, where many of us in a group came together and got to cook something that would be good for diabetes or high blood pressure and do it together as a community, that that would be a better way to spend your time at the doctor's office. Um, so those are different ways to do um, culinary medicine. That's where I got trained. Functional medicine is kind of a new integrative branch of uh, medicine and different people call themselves functional doctors. So you have to be kind of careful. It's not super regulated yet. I went through the, what's called the Institute of Functional Medicine that does have connections with Cleveland Clinic and so is a little more evidence-based. They have a website called ifm.org where they have information for people who are in the health-related food or health-related industry and people who might not be but who are interested in that kind of um, medicine and nutritional medicine and they have a couple free resources on there as well. Okay, nice. We also have a question saying, uh, what are some practical tips for increasing fiber in our diet? Ah, good question, because we all are deficient in fiber in the United States. But those vegetables, the more you can add in those vegetables, um, the zucchini, the squashes, it's squash season right now. So pumpkins, acorn squash, I got them all over the place. Those are all great sources of fiber those whole grains. If you're getting the bread like your grandma used to make that is, is brown and hard and heavy, they have those whole grains in them, the whole wheats. They have a, a good amount of fiber as well. So those grains are good for us. It's just, again, when they process them, they take a lot of that fiber out. Some of the things like oatmeal, oatmeal and barley um, are also grains that are good at bringing the cholesterol down. So mostly lots of nice vegetables. Those seeds add fiber. Avocado is a great source of nice fat and fiber. Perfect. Okay, and lastly, uh, the question is, can we get a copy of the Mediterranean Food Pyramid? Yes. I will have to apologize. I was um, putting those together and I was trying to take nice fancy pictures and this and that and ran out of time, but I will definitely um, finish that. We're going to try to post it on our website and that is a little bribery for you guys to come back because the rest of the month is full of a lot more um, awesome webinars. You know, and we talked about food today and all the different colors, how when you add them together, that's when we get the best uh, benefit. But if we take the food and then add in the exercise and the stress relief and some of the other things, the other lifestyle choices that we're going to be talking about this month, then we really get the tip top benefit. So hopefully we'll see you back at our website and we'll put that information up on the website. Perfect. And that concludes all of our questions for tonight. Great. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you, Dr. Stevenson and Nader Shah for this incredible webinar. I love this cooking demonstration. The spaghetti squash is a great idea. It sounds delightful. I look forward to trying it myself. The recording of this webinar is going to be posted on our YouTube channel and the link for that can be found on our website, which has been added into our chat room. Uh, <laughs> We will also post all PDFs and any relevant documents related to this webinar in the same place. If you would like to sign up for any future events, visit our website and sign up for 
our final nutrition webinar, which will be hosted tomorrow by Dr. Grace Jones at 5 p.m. We will be discussing the role that carbohydrates play in our wellness. Next week, we will discuss mind, body, and spirit. The third week, we will be discussing chronic, I'm sorry, chronic condition prevention, awareness, and management. Just before Thanksgiving, we will have a conversation about how to make the best of the 2020 holiday season during such difficult times. Our last session on November 30th will integrate all we have learned throughout the month of November, and we'll be discussing how you can put everything together. I would also like to thank my mentor, Dr. Jay Schubrook, who worked so hard to make this happen. Thank you everyone for coming tonight and we really hope to see you again. Thanks for zooming into wellness with us.